I really like Raspberry Pi boards and use them in my projects a lot. I wanted to buy another one to install Home Assistant in it, but I couldn't find anything for sale. And naturally, I searched for another alternative to it. And finally, I think I have found one. It is pretty hard to find a Raspberry Pi board nowadays. Wherever I looked, it was out of stock. If you are able to find something available for sale, you should buy it of course right away. Because even if they became available, they go out of stock again. And this is the actually main reason why I was looking for an alternative. I stumbled upon these devices, Apple Mac Mini 2s. They are pretty old and nowadays most people are just trying to get rid of those because it is not supported by the Apple whatsoever, but they have pretty decent processing power, RAM capacity is also nice, and most of the time you also get pretty nice memory as well. And prices are around 50 bucks if you want to buy it right away, you can get it, I guess, pretty easily for 50 bucks. But if you search for a bit, I think you can find even better deals than that. For example, I was able to get mine for 20 euros. I think it is a pretty nice deal and it is definitely faster than Raspberry Pi and also has more RAM and also, of course, obviously more memory. On top of that, you would probably get a power brick and even if you, for example, have a Raspberry Pi board, you need to think about the power because Raspberry Pi also needs another power source. It finally arrived and the seller kindly gifted me a wireless keyboard, which is nice. Maybe I can also use this. And I received some adapters to use Mac Mini and also the power brick as well. What's inside of the box is, of course, Mac Mini 2. And also a bunch of CDs and also nice packaging. The CD-ROM on this device is not working and the seller already mentioned me that, which is fine and I guess that's why I was able to buy it so cheap. Honestly, I don't even remember using the CD-ROM for a long time. I guess that would mean that I won't be able to use any of the CDs that I received from the seller, which is definitely fine for me. I will just put those away. Air slots on my Mac Mini got a little bit out-colored because of the years of usage. But it is fairly easy to fix. You just need a little bit acetone and also cotton tips to clean that. It is entirely a cosmetic issue, but I like my devices to look clean. It is also a good idea to clean rest of the device with a cotton and some acetone as well. It will make it look newer and make it more hygienic. Currently there is no operating system installed in the device yet. Also, CD-ROM is not working. Maybe it can be fixed, but I don't know if I should spend any time on fixing this. Probably it is just an easy fix, because when I push the CD-ROM inside, it feels like it is touching something, and then it rejects the CD. But I don't even really remember using the CD-ROM player quite a while, and the device already got 5 USB ports, and I will try to install the operating system using the USB port. And the next thing I did was downloading the Ubuntu. You can use any other Linux versions really if you plan to install Home Assistant, it won't really matter. But I like Ubuntu because it is a lot convenient and you don't need to spend a lot of time to configure things. Also, even if you have a problem, it is easier to find resources especially applicable to the Ubuntu. On top of that, even if you are not planning to install Home Assistant, I think it's really a nice idea to install Ubuntu because Apple stopped providing any updates, even the security updates, you won't be able to find anything really. You won't be able to install latest versions of the most of the softwares. So if you install Ubuntu, you would get all the benefits. It would be a lot safer. But the topic of the video is not really related to that, so I leave it here. After downloading the file, you need to flash it to USB drive. I like Bali Nature because it is pretty straightforward and easy to use. Also it is pretty important to select the correct drive, otherwise you would lose all of your data on that drive. I was almost selecting the wrong one. Then you just need to click the flash button and it will do the rest. After it has been completed, 
just put it in one of the USB drives on the Mac Mini and press the start button. To enter the boot menu, press Option or Alt plus C buttons. Then it will enter the boot menu. Here you need to select the USB drive, not the hard disk, to boot from. And then the booting screen will start. Right now you have two options and one is to install it with the graphical user interface and I recommend that one if you plan to use the Mac Mini for other purposes as well or if you are not really an expert and just want something simpler. Another option is not installing the GUI and instead you can just install the operating system and of course the performance would be a lot faster and everything will be working quite smoothly. It depends on how you plan to use the Mac Mini. I will install it with the graphical user interface because I think it's a lot more convenient because also I plan to use it for browsing in the internet time to time, maybe watch some YouTube videos or something. And also I don't want to use another separate computer to search for documentation if something goes wrong. Well, but it is up to you. After this, Ubuntu will install required files to your RAM. Then you can try Ubuntu or install it to your hard drive. Installing Ubuntu is pretty straightforward. You need to click the install Ubuntu button and select your keyboard layout and other jazz. You all need to do is follow the instructions and if you are not sure what options you need to select, you can just click next like the other software installations. Then you need to remove your USB drive and restart your Mac Mini. Right now you have a few options to install the Home Assistant to your Mac Mini. OS version is the one that you install it to your Raspberry Pi. But if you install that version, you won't be able to use your Mac Mini rather than Home Assistant. And in this table, you can see what you can expect or what you can't from the Home Assistant if you install the different versions. And first, I will install it to a container. If you are not sure if you installed the Docker or not, you can just paste the installation commands. But in this case, for the fresh new installation, I don't have it. And first, you need to install the Docker on your computer. And don't worry, I will put a text-based instructions under the descriptions. Then you can follow along those if you prefer that kind of instructions. Docker installation of the Home Assistant is pretty straightforward. You just need to enter the same comments that I am writing here right now. But you need to update your time zone and also location of your Home Assistant, like I highlighted here. Then it will get all the necessary files from the internet and install it to your computer. And it is installed. You can access your Home Assistant as usual from your phone or your, from your computer. Also, you need to create an account and do the usual stuff, of course. In this type of installation, everything works fine, but you don't have supervisor on it, so you need to install add-ons yourself. It's not that hard to install the add-ons yourself, but supervisor makes things quite easier. If you prefer supervisor installation, I will quickly show that one as well. First, you need to install the VirtualBox. VirtualBox is a software which lets us to use the Home Assistant image as a virtual machine. So that way we can install the Home Assistant operating system inside of our operating system and we don't need to deal with any of the dependencies or library management at all. Everything will be handled by the Home Assistant. After installing it, we need to type in VirtualBox in the terminal and start the VirtualBox. Then VirtualBox application will stop and you need to click the new button and type a name that you like. Also select type as a Linux machine and select 64-bit Linux version and then click next. After this, you need to allocate some memory. In the Home Assistant page, it is recommended to allocate at least 2 GB of memory. You can also assign more if your automations are fairly complex or you have very demanding add-ons. Then click next button again and then select use an existing virtual hard disk file option. Also you need to download the appropriate image from the Home Assistant website and I will put a link down in the description so you don't need to search for it. After downloading the file, you need to extract it and then you should select the file you downloaded in VirtualBox Manager. Then click the Settings button and click the System tab. And here you need to enable 
EFI special OSIS only option clicked, I mean ticked. Click the network tab and from here select attach to bridge adapter. Click the audio tab and here select Intel HD audio. If it is not assigned by default, you can also increase the CPU amount under the processor tab. By default, VirtualBox does not free up the unused disk space. To fix this, you can open a new terminal and rename the virtual ne machine name on the terminal, uh, the place that I am fixing right now, with the name that you saved in your virtual machine. Then in the VirtualBox, click Reload Settings and click OK. Now you are ready to click the Start button and Home Assistant will start under the virtual machine, of course. If you replace your hard disk drive with an SSD, this step will be a lot faster, of course. You will see a dramatic increase on the speed. Currently, I don't have any separate SSD with me right now. Maybe I can buy another one in the future. But if you have one already, I recommend you to do so. After this, you can access your home assistant as usual. Of course, you should again do the usual stuff, creating an account and assigning password and etc. Once you logged in, you would see the interface that you are familiar with from the Raspberry Pi Home Assistant installation, but it will be a lot faster. My experience is the Home Assistant behaves a little bit more responsive and it is a lot faster with my all automations compared to Raspberry Pi. You can install all your add-ons from the add-on store as usual. And if you don't want to spend time on the installing add-ons and configuring things, I recommend you to install the supervisor version as well. With the Mac Mini from 2009, I think this device is more than enough for Home Assistant and also you can occasionally use it for browsing the internet and you can watch some videos from YouTube for example if you don't mind VGA graphics of course. I think Mac Minis are quite suitable for home automation and definitely for Home Assistant and you can get everything quite cheaper compared to the Raspberry Pi. And also it looks nice. You can put it in your living room and it would look all right. Usually with the Raspberry Pi boards, I would either put them inside of the drawer or try to find a case for them, buy it or 3D print it. But with this, you can easily put it in anywhere you like in your home and no one really would ask it what this thing is. This installation methods would also work on your old computers and also old laptops as well. But still, if you put your old laptop or old computer in the living room, it would not look that good. But you should get the same result, of course, from those. And if you already have an old computer which you are not using, I recommend you this solution because it is really convenient and prices fairly cheaper. And I can easily say that I am switching from Raspberry Pi boards to make mini for all my home automation needs. Right now I put it in the kitchen and we have a TV in the kitchen and we are not really using that TV a lot, but time to time we are watching some YouTube videos or something while cooking stuff. For this TV, I don't mind using VGA graphics because TV doesn't support high resolutions anyway. And also I won't be using it for gaming or something, so the performance is not really an issue for me. But other than that, maybe I can hide the power brick behind the TV and it would look a little bit more nicer. But even as it is right now, I think it is looking fine. So far it works pretty fine and it works pretty silently and you don't hear anything from it. While watching videos, the fan spins a little bit, but... Since we are using this thing while cooking, we already have these cooking noises and you don't hear it as well. That's the solution for my problem so far. What do you think about this solution? Would you also consider buying a secondhand Mac Mini for your home assistant installation? Or you would rather use a Raspberry Pi still? Please share your opinions down in the comments. And like always, if you like this video, don't forget to give a thumbs up. And see you next time.